Welcome to Movie Speeching. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take good care. The Great Battle is the name of the movie. Please like and subscribe to get every update. The story of the Tang Dynasty's siege of Anxi Fortress in 645 AD. The film begins with Emperor Taizong, the Emperor of China, invading the Goguryeo Kingdom of Korea. He was known as the God of War because of his ambitious determination to conquer the entire country. Goguryeo's General Yun sent 150,000 troops to confront Taizong's army at Mount Jupal. While Emperor Taizong watched the battle from afar and was confident in the strength of his army, Yun's army was determined to hold out despite its numerical inferiority. Priority. It turns out another hidden Chinese army is attacking behind the Yun army's lines, forcing them to retreat. One of the men, Samul, mourned his brother's death and decided to carry his body on his back until General Yun told him to leave his brother. Out of 150,000 people, fewer than 10,000 survived. Meanwhile, Emperor Taizong and his generals discussed plans for the next step. A captured Korean woman, a sacred medium with the ability to predict the future, has forbidden the Chinese people from touching the ancient Gogi bow that belonged to the sacred King Jamong, believing it to be a sacred relic. Sacred. The men continued to discuss their next plan, explaining to the emperor that they must next conquer Ansi Fortress before taking the Goguryeo capital. They believed they could take the fortress without bloodshed due to the feud between Ansi Commander Manchun Yang and General Yun. In addition, the sacred medium comes into contact with Yang, which gives the Chinese an advantage. On the other hand, General Yun suspected that Emperor Taizong would attack Ansi Fortress next. He tells Samul that Commander Yang did not send reinforcements to help his army in previous battles, which is why he called him a traitor. Therefore, he wanted Samul to kill Commander Yang, because he believed that Samul could complete the mission because of his loyalty even though he was from Ansi. General Yun told Samul to join the army in the capital after completing his mission. On the way to Ansi, Samul met two Korean soldiers accompanying him. They help a group of civilians whose car is stuck on a muddy road, then ask one of them to take them to Commander Yang of Ansi. To their surprise, the person they were helping was Commander Yang, who remained calm despite being wary of them. Yang's men examined the soldiers' horses and deduced that they were Taizong's spies, then promptly killed them. However, Samul tries to explain that he is from Ansi, the last of the Yulbul clan. He claimed to be on the run from the Chinese army and decided to stand with the Ansi people. Yang decides not to kill him, but to tie him up and then interrogate him inside the fortress. They then settled in Ansi, a bustling town hidden behind the fortress. A fight broke out in the market between Walbo and Pong, two trusted men of Yang. Yang resolves the fight by telling the men to mind their own business. Walbo, who was skilled in using an axe, had to continue the work of repairing the fortress wall with his men. Returning home, Yang tells Samul that he knows Yan called him a traitor and questions Samul's motives for serving him in Ansi. He then introduces Samul to his second-in-command, Chu, as well as Walbo and Pong. He then appointed Samul as his standard bearer, always by his side to indicate his position in battle. That evening, Samul followed him to visit the home of a newborn baby named after him. Samul realized how much Commander Yang was loved by the people of Ansi. The next day, Samul asked Chu General Yang what kind of leader he was, and he replied that people liked to think of this general as Ansi Fortress. He said Ansi wouldn't be the same without him. General Yang is looking for Paso, the cavalry leader, who is hanging out with his sister, Bekha. Yang wants to kill Paso for dating Bekha, but she protects him. They are interrupted by news of the arrival of Chinese scouts. They deduce that Taizong and his army were not far behind and would soon attack the fortress. While preparing for battle, General Yang asked Samul to see his dagger and cut his beard. Samul knew this was the perfect time to kill Yang, but he couldn't do it. Looking at his clenched fist, Yang knew Samul was sent by Yun to kill him, but he told her that there would be another chance to kill him if Samul wanted to do so. Then they went into battle. The main army arrived on an impressive scale in front of 5,000 Ansi men. General Yang gave words of encouragement to his troops, advising them to fight for Ansi Pawn and to cherish their lives here. To penetrate the fortress wall, the Chinese army threw stones with catapults. However, they were unable to penetrate the wall due to the structural integrity of the fort. The Ansi archers were very skilled. They were able to prevent the Chinese army from reaching the fortress. Although the main wooden gate had been breached, the Ansi army had prepared a wooden fence to trap Chinese soldiers entering the gate. Then, they formed a close formation to push the troops out of the fortress. Emperor Taizong ordered a retreat, returning home. 
Commander Yang shows Samul his scars from fighting Tang forces and Yun's spies, telling Samul that there is no point in killing him as Yun will only send another spy. Antsy people gathered outside to celebrate today's victory. Samul pointed the knife at Yang and asked him why he disobeyed General Yun. He tells her that she must protect the fortress and not to obey General Yun. He did not send his men to help reinforce General Yun's army because that would have left the fortress defenseless. That evening, Taizong's troops returned to attack the fortress, now equipped with siege towers and arcs of fire. Yang ordered his men to prepare oil bags and burn the siege towers by hitting them himself. He was stabbed by a spear and was almost killed, but Samul protected him. After four days, he woke up, clearing the entire city. Chu and the others, who were skeptical of Samul's loyalty, still respect him even though he saved Yang. Although the city was glad to have survived another attack, Emperor Taizong allowed the holy medium to predict Antsy's future. Based on this prophecy, the Chinese army built a mound higher than the fortress so that it could be attacked from the same level. The sacred vehicle was then sent to Antsy to deliver the ancient bow and carry the message of surrender. Upon receiving the message, Samul offered to request reinforcements from the capital, but the men doubted that reinforcements would arrive. Paso suggested that they attack Emperor Taizong directly while the mound was still under construction, as the army was not too concerned about security. Although Bekov vehemently opposes this idea, no one can deny that this is the only way to try. Paso and his men went to Emperor Taizong's encampment, but the ambush was discovered and they were trapped. Paso tried to get back to the commander before breathing his last breath. They learned that the Holy Bronze had warned Emperor Taizong about the ambush. She explained that Antsy would have no way to win except by surrendering to Emperor Taizong, as she had seen the future of destruction. Samul slit his own throat, refusing to believe that Antsy would fall. Overwhelmed with grief, Bekao wanted to kill Emperor Taizong himself, but was also defeated. His body was brought back to the fortress so that General Yang could bury Bekha and Paso together properly. He decided to release their bodies in the river. Samul decided to go see General Yun. He begged General Yun to help the Antsy people because even though Yang may be considered a traitor, he and the Antsy people are still Goguryeo and they fight bravely for the country. Meanwhile, Yang came up with the idea of overthrowing the mound built by the Chinese military after seeing children playing with dirt and rocks. He discussed his idea with the local miners, led by Wu Dei, who agreed that the local soil consisted of loose pebbles that could be easily covered if they dug a system cave below the mound. However, because the slope of the mound was towards the fort, they had to time their overthrow perfectly to prevent the Chinese from advancing towards the fort the same way they overthrew it. After a few days, the cave construction work was almost completed. They planned to burn the columns of the mound structure in the morning. However, overnight rains caused water to flood into the cave and leave the pillars so wet that they could not be burned. Wu Dei agrees to use an axe to cut down the columns, sacrificing himself and his men to be buried under the mound. They cut the columns and the mound collapsed as Chinese soldiers advanced towards the fort. Yang and his men quickly took over the mound and drove out the remaining Chinese troops still on the mound, angering Emperor Taizong. He would not stop the attack until Yang was dead, so the battle continued day and night until Yang and his men ran out of arrows and other ammunition. He asked one of his men to retrieve Jamung's ancient bow and intended to pointed at Emperor Taizong while praying to the gods of Goguryeo to help him. Taizong's army advanced toward them, but Yang's men were determined to keep their commander and hold on no matter what. The arrow left Yang's hand and accurately hit one of Emperor Taizong's eyes, seriously injuring him. The long-awaited reinforcements of General Yun and his army arrived, trapping the Chinese on both sides. They fled and admitted defeat while Commander Yang rejoiced with the people of Anzi. He noticed Samul from General Yun's army approaching above the fortress and kissed him. Three years after returning to his homeland, Emperor Taizong succumbed to his wounds and died. Meanwhile, Antsy Fortress was being rebuilt and peace was restored in Goguryeo. Samul prepares to return to the capital to complete his military academy, bidding farewell to Commander Yang, who tells him to return to Antsy whenever he wants. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.